We have now just opened our new centre, which is, involves a new riding arena, which will give us great access to being able to rehabilitate more horses throughout the whole year. We also have a visitor centre and cafe, restaurant, which we will be able to highlight the work of the whole charity, not just the rehabilitation of horses at Belwade Farm. If anybody thinks this is a bit big for um, a charity like this, I suppose the answer is we just have to remind them that, in particular in periods of recession, that charities like World Horse Welfare, and particularly us, I suppose, because having set so many of the standards in loans and rehoming, uh, they never are more needed than at moments like this. So we have been here today at the Houses of Parliament to highlight what we believe is an impending horse crisis. Six charities have come together with the support of National Equine Welfare Council to warn government and the public that we are standing on the edge of a precipice. We've been working together for a number of years now to try and cope with the rising number of welfare cases that we're coming across. And we believe that this winter could be a real tipping point where the number of spaces available in the welfare centres is simply outstripped by the demand of the number of horses needing urgent care. Horse meat is still popular in many countries across Europe. In order to meet demand, horses are often purchased cheaply and transported over vast distances, such as the common route from Poland to Italy. With temperatures reaching in excess of 40 degrees centigrade, horses are packed into tiny compartments with totally inadequate space on all sides. These are not beautiful high-tech horse boxes. The horses suffer pain, dehydration, injury, exhaustion and stress. The number of horses travelling has dropped from around 165,000 in 2001 to around 65,000 in 2010. Unless a short maximum journey limit is introduced, the numbers are likely to rise again. So we must continue to put pressure on the European Commission to end this barbaric practice. Following a visit to Cambodia from FEI representatives last year, World Horse Welfare were invited to assess the level of foot care within the country. Here we have a, a typical shoeing um, done where the pony has been put into a set of stocks because of the angle that the farrier is at, which is a squatting position. He's down on the ground and he's trimming upwards. It's impossible to accurately look down a foot and see whether it's level if you are working upwards. Having undertaken that research trip, it became clear as well that to be able to advance equestrian sport in Cambodia, that the saddlery element also needed to be considered. We developed a programme designed to enable local farriers that had already been trained to a certain level within Cambodia uh, to train them to the next level and also to increase the level of saddlery knowledge in Cambodia as a whole. Yeah, to keep it off the spinal process. All the students have been taught to do it um, the UK way, which is the foot is placed between the legs and that way they can see whether the foot can be balanced. It's very endearing to know that the skills that we've introduced uh, can have a direct impact on horse welfare, both in the sporting and rural communities. What we feel Cambodia really needs is to have people in each of the communities that we're working with that have got both the knowledge and the skills to help improve the welfare of the animals within their villages. It's so exciting that the Olympic Games are in London for the first time since 1948. And of course it's added significance for the equestrian sport because it marks a hundred years since it was entered into the Olympic Games. World Horse Welfare has been an independent welfare advisor to the FEI for nearly 30 years. And at the heart of that involvement was our help in drafting the FEI Code of Conduct, which all of those involved in the sport have to follow. And this places the welfare of the horse as paramount over all other considerations, both commercial and competitive. The London Olympic and Paralympic Games is a wonderful opportunity 
to showcase the work that goes into protecting the welfare of our equine athletes and the extraordinary partnership between horse and rider.